Uh, about six or seven years ago when I was in college, uh, one of my best friends in school left to go to the research project here in Senegal. Uh, while he was here, he converted to Islam. Uh, when he came back, uh, he was Muslim, he was practicing, he was not doing any of the things that we did before. He was not, you know, running around being wild and crazy. Uh, and it changed our friendship a lot. But I wasn't going to let a religion come between us. I stayed friends with him. And then just watching him over five years, seeing him grow as a Muslim, had a strong impact on me. Um, then I moved to New York. Uh, and he called me up one day and said, Hey, my sheikh from Senegal is in New York. You know, you should go visit him. Go meet him, greet him. And I heard he had told me a lot about this sheikh. So I thought, okay, you know, a big important person. I would like to see him. I would like to meet him. So I go to meet him in New York uh, and just greeted him. And that was it. He didn't have too much to say. And after I walked away from there, I was a little disappointed. I had more questions for him. I had more things on my heart that I wanted to tell him. So I go back the next day. He sees me, calls me in. I talk to him for a little while. And just after meeting him, seeing how he simplified things, and seeing my friend, how my friend had changed and grown, by the end of the night, I had converted. Um, I had taken Islam. I really did not know that much about Islam. Uh, it was just something I felt that I should do. Uh, so next two months, were kind of up and down. I had all these questions. What have I done? I'm a Muslim. What does that mean? And then sometimes, oh, I'm a Muslim. That's great. But I had all these questions. Uh, Ramadan was coming up. My friend was going to Senegal. He said, why don't you come with us? Go, go to Senegal. Um, so I said, okay, why not? I have these questions. So I came here for Ramadan for three or four weeks. Um, got my questions answered. I saw this Islamic community and how it worked and how, you know, how strong it was. Uh, I came once, one other time to visit. And that second time I came to visit, I didn't want to leave. I was here. Uh, it, it was secure. It was safe. I could see everything working well. So I made arrangements to come back and study and teach for a year here. Teach English and study Quran, study Islam. I've learned how to read the letters. I can say them, I can pronounce them. Uh, right now, I'm working on uh, Surat al uh, and I just finished Surat al Duha. Um, so I plan to learn a few more surahs, maybe get one juice, learn one juice or two juices, and then start studying the Arabic language. So not only can I read it and pronounce it, but then I know what I'm reading and saying. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Duha wa layli idha saja ma wada'aka rabbuka wa ma kalla wa la la khiratu khayrun laka minal-Ullah wa la sofa yutika rabbuka fatarda alam yajidka yatiman fa'awwa wa wajadaka dalan fahadda wa wajadaka a'ilan fa'agna wa amma yatiman fala takhar so I was I was telling your your other your assistant that the kid sitting right to my left one day I was reciting uh, one of the surahs Surah al Adiyah. I happened to make eye contact with him, and as soon as he heard what I was saying, heard maybe two words, he joined in and carried me the rest of the way reciting the, the surah. And I was amazed. Here's this little eight-year-old kid, and he could, you know, hear one or two words and go the rest of the way perfectly reciting it. I realized that, you know, it would be nice to know exactly what I'm saying and all the, the nuances of the meaning. Um, and so... I wanted to get more comfortable with reading and then understand the language, be able to converse even and go beyond just the Quranic Arabic. I'm here teaching English and I know that that's a need in a lot of countries. And I've thought about maybe Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, where 
you know, I can speak and get by with English, maybe teach English and study at the same time. One of the things I've found about being here in Senegal, in this Medina, is that it's safe and it's secure. It's easy to be a good Muslim here. It's easy to make my salat on time. You know, it's easy to do all my prayers. Whereas in the United States, it's very difficult to be a good Muslim. There are just so many distractions, so many things to keep you from making salat on time, to keep you from studying Quran, to keep you, you know, from making your early morning prayers. And this is, this is my room, along with Ibrahim, who has been here for 12 years. I've been here five months. Um, and like I say, I'm just now able to, re to read and pronounce the Quran. Uh, Ibrahim has been a big inspiration on me, not only for just watching him live as a good Muslim, but seeing him being able to even converse and speak Arabic. Uh, he's he's been studying it, I guess, six, at least six years, um, 